Hi, I want to talk to you about the buffer region. Really interesting. Um, so, quick reminder, here we have a tri our titration curve. This is going to be an acid, a weak acid titrated by a strong base. Um, of course, right here, there's our equivalence point. That's where the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. Um, moles of hydrogen equal moles of, con of hydroxide. This right here is our buffer, okay? This whole region is going to be our buffer region. And that point is really special. That's the halfway point. Um, also called the half equivalence point, ideal buffer, midway point, okay? All of those same words. Um, now I wanna talk, we're gonna focus right here on this region. So to do this, bring back into your mind the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Um, so pH equals pKa plus the log of conjugate base divided by acid. Now notice that's not base. That's not the strong base of sodium hydroxide that's doing the titration. That's the relative of the acid, acid and its conjugate base. So here's an example. Um, we're going to pretend that we are titrating acetic acid with the sodium hydroxide. So that acid conjugate base pair, here it is. I wrote it out so you could see it explicitly. It's going to be the acetic acid. And when that donates the hydrogen, it becomes acetate ion and that's the conjugate base. So this is what we're looking at right here. That's the acid and this is the conjugate base. Okay, it's that acid conjugate base pair that's going to make the buffer. Um, and the reason why this is the buffer is that that's an acid, that's a base, criteria number one. And number two, those don't react together. They don't react together, um, fulfills our second criteria. Okay, so we're going to look at three different scenarios. Let's let look at our first one. Um, we're going to begin this titration. So I have my acetic acid that's been dissolved in water. And now we add a drop of the sodium hydroxide. So a little reminder, this is going to be your NaOH titration, okay? Now, an honest truth, with that first drop, it is going to react with the acetic acid, produce some of that base, you've started your buffer. You've started your buffer. Let me write down the chemical equation, and I think this might help you see it. So we're going to have the acetic acid and we'll add the hydroxide to it. Okay, even with one drop, it is going to produce the acetate ion, which remember is the conjugate base, plus water. So when I add one drop of this, oh, I have both the acid and the conjugate base. Even right here at the very beginning, I have that buffer, it's starting. We're starting to create this buffer. Um, and let me write this down. Remember, here's your acid, and that's your conjugate base right there. Nice. Okay, so let's say that we um, add the hydroxide, add the hydroxide, add the hydroxide until we have the same amount of acetic acid as we do um, the acetate ion. That would be this first scenario right here. The acetic acid equals the acetate ion. Acid equals conjugate base. Um, so let's go ahead and plug this into our Henderson-Hasselbach. I did take just a second up here to show you, remind you how to find pKa. So pKa is the negative log of Ka. The Ka of our acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So do the negative log and you get 4.74. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So pH equals 4.74 pKa plus the log of, so notice what I put here, they're the same. So I'm going to say it's one, all right? It could be 0.01 moles, 0.01 moles, 0.5 moles, 0.5 moles. We could do molarity. You can do moles or molarity on this. If you need to watch the Henderson-Hasselbalch um, video to see why, you can. The volumes cancel out. Um, so you can use molarity or moles, but they're the same. Whatever they are, they're the same. Notice, same number divided by same number, one. Log of one is zero log of one, put that in your calculator, log of one is zero. Um, so notice pH equals 4.74. Here it is at the halfway point, pH equals pKa. Really important, that's very, very special. Um, another thing to remember is that when the pH equals pKa, the halfway point, we're halfway through the titration. If it took 10 mils to get to this, I can tell you right now, to get the rest of the way to the equivalence point, just double it. It'll be 20 mils to get to the equivalence point. This is halfway through the titration to get to the beautiful equal moles of 
acid, acetic acid, and base, not conjugate base, base, sodium hydroxide. Okay, um, now buffering region, that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. Um, this is the perfect buffer, why it's called the ideal buffer, because you have maximum amount of both the acid and conjugate base. Well, what if we're not quite there? What if we're not exactly at that point? Let's, there's um, a couple of takeaways we can, we can deduce from these formulas right here. <clears throat> okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, let's say that we have a one to 10 ratio. Let's say that um, we're adding our base, adding our base, adding our base, adding our base. We've consumed a lot of that acid and it's made a lot of the conjugate base. So we have 10 times more conjugate base. Let's see what happens right here. So pH equals pKa, 4.74 plus, so log of conjugate base is 10 divided by the acid is one. Now again, this could be um, any moles that you have. It could be that you have 0.1 moles and down here you have 0 0.01 moles, which makes that a 10 to one ratio. Um, I'm just going to use easy numbers for us. So you have 10 times the amount of the conjugate base in the acid. Well, log of 10 is one. Put that in your calculator. Log of 10, I'm gonna write this down as one. So pH will be 4.74 plus one puts you at 5.74. So this here, 4.74, it's higher. Now notice something on this. We have more conjugate base. Totally makes sense that the pH will be higher because you have more conjugate base. We've produced more of this product. Okay, makes sense. Now, let's say that we haven't added as much of the hydroxide. We still have 10 times the amount of acid than we do conjugate base, okay? So I'm adding the hydroxide and then I get this snapshot where, oh, we have 10 times the amount of conjugate base. Let's plug that in over here. So pH equals 4.74 plus log of, so this is a one to 10 ratio, um, one for the conjugate base, 10 for the acid, just means I have 10 times more acid than conjugate base. So maybe um, we could be at like, here would be your 0.01, and this would be your 0.1 moles, something like that. Um, log of 110, log of 0.1 is minus one. When you try to do that, that's a minus one. So let's do the easy math here. pH equals 4.74 minus one, <gasps> check it out. 3.74. The pH is less than what it is when it's right here, that perfect buffer, that ideal buffer. Um, and this also makes sense. Why? Because you have more of the acid. You have more of the acid than you do the conjugate base. So I might take these numbers and put them up here. Remember, this was your 4.74 pH right here. It would be your 4.74. And then I have my 3.74 and up here we'd have our 5.74. Sorry, that's not to scale. Give me a little bit of grace. Sorry about that. Um, what do you notice? When we have more acid, the conjugate base, the pH is less than the halfway point. Let's write it down. At this point down here, the acid is greater than the conjugate base. Right here at that halfway point, the acid equals the conjugate base. But then if I'm up here, if I'm past that halfway point, that means that we have more of the what? Conjugate base that's been added. So right here, this is going to be the acid is less than the conjugate base. So notice here, pH less than the pKa, or excuse me, the pH is less than our ideal buffer. And right here, the pH is greater than what that ideal buffer is, that halfway point. Wow. Uh, this right here is a great multiple choice question that you will be asked. Um, buffering region where you have to predict, is that pH going to be greater than or less than the pH at the halfway point, at that half equivalence point? Um, and here's how you figure it out. Well, do you have more acid or more conjugate base? If you have more acid, the pH is lower. If you have more conjugate base, the pH is higher. That's very, very logical. Um, now, 
This is doing a weak acid with a strong base. You can have the same, same thoughts um, as we're looking at a, a weak base titrated by a strong acid. So in this um, scenario, we're going to have a cyanide, um, a cyanide ion that's going to be our weak base. And let's say that we titrate this with a hydrochloric acid. Um, that's going to be our titration. Uh, that will be your titrant. Um, okay, so I did the pKa on this. The only thing I have to warn you on this is that is a base. So to do Henderson-Hasselbalch, you have to look up this conjugate acid, which is hydrocyanic acid, cyanic acid HCN, and that Ka is 4 times 10 to the minus 10. Um, so you plug in uh, pKa equals negative log of Ka, do the math, we get 9.40. So this right here, um, pH equals pKa when? It's when the acid concentra concentration equals the conjugate base. So in this scenario, the acid is the hydrocyanic acid and the base is going to be the cyanide ion. So right here, this is going to be a pH of 9.4 because that's the pKa, because that's the pKa. Um, so we'd be asked to predict, well, what if you have more acid, what happens to the pH? So if I have more acid, if that's greater than the conjugate base, is it going to be greater or less than 9.4? Again, if I have more of the acid than that conjugate base, more acid, the conjugate base, more acid, that's going to pull the pH down. The pH is going to be less than 9.40. That would be somewhere in this region. So right over here, um, we would have the acid is going to be greater than the conjugate base because um, you're producing that acid. We have more acid, pulls down the pH. Um, now, if you want to prove it, let's prove that. Um, Let's take Henderson Hasselbalch. So pH equals pKa, which is 9.40, plus log of conjugate base, let's say that's one, and I have more acid. Again, let's pretend that that's 10, right? So I have more acid than conjugate base. Log of 0.1 is minus one. That is going to be a pH of 8.4. It's lower, it's lower. Um, and then let's say, well, what if I have more conjugate base? Well, if I have more conjugate base, the pH is going to be higher. If I have more base, the pH is higher. Totally makes sense. Um, you could plug this in too. Let's do it right here. Let's say I have more conjugate base. So pH equals pK, 9.4 plus log. Let's say that I have 10 uh, compared to one. 10 of the conjugate base for every one of my acid. Log of 10 is one. So the pH would be 10.40. So that would be up here right up here where um, the acid is less than the conjugate base. I've got more conjugate base, so it pulls that pH up. Now, I was purposeful in using the number 10 to one or one to 10. It's easy to do the math. And I wanted to let you know, we consider a buffering region as a plus or minus one. So very, very technically, this, that plus or minus one, this is what we would call plus or minus one of a pH. This right here, um, when you have plus or minus one of that pKa value, uh, which is where pH is, remember that this equals pH, that is called the buffer region. We want a buffer to be able to um, hold a pH um, within plus or minus one pH points um, for, for the most part, for, for most of what we do. Um, so this would be considered the buffer region right there um, that we're between a 3.74 and a 5.74 with that middle 4.74 as the perfect buffer, as that perfect buffer of the one-to-one -one ratio between acid and conjugate base. Okay, nice. So there you have it on buffer region. Um, here's the easy, dirty way to look at it. If you have more acid than conjugate base, the pH is lower than the halfway point. If you have more base than, con if you have more of the conjugate base 
than the acid, then the pH is higher. And you can see that over here as well. So really easy takeaways uh, for some multiple choice questions that you could be asked. Okay, good work. Very proud of you. Have a nice day.